Well, happy victory Monday, everyone, and welcome to the Coach McVay Show with special guest Les Snead. We're always presented by Microsoft Surface. DeMarco Farr, JB Long with you tonight. 4-1 and one since the bye and looking ahead to Thursday night against the New Orleans Saints. DeMarco, give give Les that game ball. Game He's ball finally right here, here yeah. on the winning notes. Finally. Oh, we got man. you. There we go. Short week. Finally. How's that feel? Come on. Oh, when Artis told me yesterday that I was doing this show, I was like, he didn't tell me before, so I don't know when we made the decision. But I'm yeah. like, oh, finally, get to do the show after a win. <laughs> Poor Les, the calendar has not often been in his favor in previous years. He often steps in for Sean McVay on mm-hmm. short weeks. We're glad to have him here today. Uh, and the Rams have now officially exceeded their external expectations, I guess, at least. Seven and seven, no longer need any help to make the postseason. I know it's not mission accomplished, but for a group that bet on themselves this offseason and decided to retool on the fly, is that validating for the choice you made this spring? It, it, I don't know if it's necessarily just for the choice we made this spring, but it's, it's always an element of sophistication. It's a complex calculus formula of, of when you start, where you go, how you finish. But it, it is fulfilling right now uh, for one to be playing quality football this time of year. And... With that being said, the quality of football actually leading to more points than the opponent on the scoreboard, more wins in the or uh, you know win column than losses, things like that, and, and and being in the hunt, being in the mix, being in, you know with a chance to to earn an opportunity to continue playing after the regular season. So I would say collectively, it's 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 fulfilling for the collective for sure. I do know football is easier when you have a great quarterback. And you know, the, the question I get the most is, am I surprised at where the Rams are at 7-7? Seven, seven and seven. They're in December. They're in the hunt. Uh, are you surprised by how this team is performing at this point in the year? Are you surprised from where you started to now to where they're how they're yeah, playing now? I think you, you, you mentioned uh, veteran QB. So I, I, think, uh, I think internally we always – you know, really discussed if we could protect Matthew, Matthew could stay healthy and play right. Uh, the ball that he is accustomed to playing, then you got a chance in every single game. I mean, that's just, this is this, and we always say it's quarterback driven mm-hmm. league and we have a really good one. And if he was going to play really good football, uh, we definitely had a chance. So I think that that would be the answer would be you would not be surprised. Now, again, there's many factors and variables had to go in. Would our offensive line jail? Would we be able to protect? Would we be able to run the type of offense that Sean, his staff, Matthew wants to run and things like that? And then you, you give everyone else credit, right? Skill, uh, some younger, some uh, veterans, right? Stepping up, some getting over injuries like Cooper and getting into the mix. So there's always variables. Uh, to it, but with what you said, not surprised. And and I, you know, there's there's probably even a a few losses behind us that we can't get back. That mm-hmm. uh, there's times you you regret losing because you felt like you had a chance in those games. So uh, when you said exceeded expectations, there could be an element internally where like, man, we we feel like we could be maybe one or two wins fair farther along. Yeah, but that's. Uh, that's hindsight. That's woulda, coulda, shoulda. What you talked about, JB, it, it it is, it is really fulfilling to be here in December and playing our, you know, some of our better football. Well, how about that opportunity then? Because I'm excited for 2024. Don't get me wrong, a full arsenal of draft picks and all those resources. But I don't want to look past this moment in time right here. Your load bearing walls are all in the lineup. They're all playing well. Who's to say you can't mess around and do something special this January? You know, that's the. That would be the vision, but I think we, the way we've approached it, uh, and now with December football, it, it's really right. You got to focus on the next game, and this one's coming up pretty fast, and that's where you're at. If you can, if we can, if we can, and I think in general, I think we've you, we've lived it this year. Is there's an element of can each individual in the organization. No matter where you're at, whether you're you're an athletic trainer, whether you're an assistant coach, whether you're a player, wherever you're at, can you have that uh, ironclad emotional control where you can live through the the ebbs and th- ebbs and flows of a season when oh my, you're on a two game losing streak, maybe even three, and you still got to show up on a Monday, maybe even do this show on a Monday. Mm-hmm. You still got to show up. To, it, the key being, there's no doubt that from an emotional standpoint, those are 
if you want to call it. You're just you just feel worse than you do when you win. Let's mm-hmm. keep it at that. And <laughs> do you allow that to bleed into to chipping away? And, and it's oftentimes you'd say, hey, if you can if you can stay even kill and come in and approach every day, uh, you know, like you're on a three game winning streak, then usually those that's how you get on streaks. That's how you approach it. So that's the that's the neat thing this group's learning is it is it is a long journey when you think about it. When it, it all starts in May, you take a little bit of summer off, and then there's an August, and then there's September, October, and there's college football going on, and then all of a sudden here we are, college football is over, there's a few games left, there's some bolt things like that, and you're still really in the thick of things. So that's the neat thing that uh, I think this collective's gone through. Yeah, it's really year round with a few weeks off, right? I mean, even when you do have weeks off, like vacation, can you really turn off football in your brain? You try to. You try, yeah. How long? So many years into this, I will definitely know that. Okay, this is probably a good week to turn it off. But you really can't. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. But uh, if you're, you got to use your experience to know when to to turn it off, when to not, so that you can be. Because when it's on, it's on. We're going through it right now, and and with Fun. with the holidays and this time of year, right? You, different people and families, they're packing up, and I'm always like, okay, it's. It's when is Christmas again? <laughs> yeah. So and I, and I have like yeah, it's like okay. Let, well, here's what I'll do. I'll think about Christmas maybe Friday afternoon. Wow. Let's just get through Thursday. Let's figure out, you know, the aftermath, the after action review. And then it's like okay, wait a minute, it's Christmas. Huh? Mm. But normally we would be playing on Christmas Eve or what have you. So that's that's what we go through. I wish someone would give me ironclad emotional control for Christmas. <laughs> that's now at the top of my wish list. I like that. I'm gonna have to that. be intentional. <laughs> Uh, thoughts on week 15 and the win over Washington. Wasn't perfect. Maybe a little bit more nerve wracking at the finish than you would have liked. But overall, wire to wire win against the commanders. Yes, it was definitely wire to wire. And there were some moments there. We, we all watched it. We all and the probably for the good this week, you really don't have time to ruminate on it. Uh, but there's definitely uh, some teachable moments. But I think, like you said, the, the result is what mattered yesterday. Uh more than anything based on the math and the standings and, and all that occurred right in the games before us. So, you know, when we kicked off, we were probably well aware that if we got to seven and seven, right, we would go from in the hunt to controlling the destiny. So with that being said, the result definitely <laughs> weighed a lot. Uh, and there were some moments where, right, it could have been probably a little bit easier, but that's football. Give, give that team credit, right? We, mm-hmm. we had an interception. We probably had a couple of good runs. We had a a penalty uh, uh, after that interception, it was twenty eight seven. So right, and then we we had the uh, missed field goal. But in that moment, right, twenty eight seven, if we could have gotten it to thirty five, could have gotten it to thirty one, might be a different game. Uh, they changed QBs, and but uh, the you know what I'll, uh, the neat well, thing I'll right, give yeah. on this is with that being said, all that went wrong, give uh, give the D credit. Starting even with DK after giving up a touchdown pass, and he gave up another one, but didn't because he made the hustle play, brought him down on the one defense right, <laughs> made the uh, uh, commanders earn it, took them eight plays. But the most important thing in that, that whole series is the, the clock they chewed up. So instead of them kicking off with us with probably five minutes to go, you know, it became an onside situation and first down away from probably clinching the game. I thought that stand down there was the most impressive thing in the game. I mean, outside of Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup going deep and all that stuff, but just that that grit they showed. And that's been the buzzword this year, the grit, the grit, the grit. I still think, and tell me if you think I'm wrong, this team is still searching for their best game. I think you've had best games from this side, best games from this side, best games from this side, but as a collective, still searching for it. But that grit is there from this football team. Am I on this? Oh, there? There was a... Excellent point because, like I think JB, you mentioned it. There was a moment there where we could have really put that game away yesterday. Then there was a moment where everyone in the stadium knew Commanders had momentum, and I'm not sure, right? Many people would have bet on, oh, there could have been almost two goal line stands based on all the momentum Mm -hmm. that Washington had right gained, earned. At that point, but to see the game flip again, like you said, to mm-hmm. wow, that somehow that defense uh, flipped a switch and 
Yeah. And not just def- not just well like, uh, defense, not just one guy, not just a oh, superstar, no a collective group going out there making plays. Yeah, I thought one of the yeah. hidden moments were at some point along the way, based on, like you said, those 11 doing their job is uh, Washington felt like we couldn't run the ball in. Mm-hmm. And and there was probably a, an element of, of not wanting to chew up clock. Yeah. I guess, ironically, they ended up chewing up clock. But it does take a collective to go, all right, we're going to try to punch this thing. And boom. As soon as they tried to punch it in, there was a wall there. And, you know, no yards to gain a few times. And I, I do think I do think when you force a team to pass uh, in that part of the uh, it's kind territory, of a win. Yeah. Uh, and you got the end zone as a, as a nice safe, it just gets really condensed and a little bit tougher to get in. And the more times you stop a team, I think all of a sudden the, the momentum swings defensive way because uh, then the offense is like, oh, we're running out of downs. Wish we'd have scored on second down. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very – there's a lot of emotions – down on, uh, let's call it, first and goal from inside the five. No doubt. Uh, as good as the faces of your franchise have been this season, as surprisingly pleasant as the rookie class has been, I don't think the Rams are in the hunt without the veteran signings that you had between OTAs and training camp. So I'm sure there's plenty of kudos to go around, but tell me about Demarcus Robinson, Akella Witherspoon, John Johnson the third coming back, and how those choices helped set the Rams up for success. I think based on what we uh, you mentioned earlier, where again there was an intentionality of of for the future cleaning up the salary cap so uh inherited a lot of you know we intentionally said we're going to inherit a lot of dead money this year so there was not going to be an opportunity to sign a lot of veterans let's call it uh when the league year started but we uh john mckay who's our direct pro personnel matthew uh chris triggers some guys that work in pro personnel there was always uh a vision to hey let's monitor who's still out there uh, May, June, even August, right? There's always veterans, uh, quality veterans that have a lot of experience experience that are going to still want to play football. And, you know, those guys kept tabs on them. You know, they uh, we kept up with them. And then when the, the moment was right, when those players – Determined, you know what? Because so, so at that point in time, too, sometimes players will will wait until the season starts. We'll wait until August. We'll see if there's some attrition. Is there going to be a better spot? Is there a chance to make more than a, a veteran minimum type contract? Things like that. So there's every everybody's uh, uh, executing their plan, whether it's the individual player who has a lot of experience but not a home yet for the 23 season, and then the you know in, in this case us monitoring who's there and who can help. So. Uh, and we 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 always kept tabs, and I, I know we we even brought in T.J. Johnson, who was standard elevated yesterday. But one of the reasons is we run eleven personnel a lot on offense, so we did want to ensure right that wide receiver position because last year when we did have injuries and we had attrition, all of a sudden you run out of quality players. But we did feel like with Sean, his staff, Matthew, uh, if we did have that, if we did run into some attrition at that position having veterans like DeMarcus, even TJ yesterday didn't yeah. get a, would be uh, definitely beneficial. Yeah, De- DeMarcus Robinson, what he brings to this football team, his athleticism, uh, his catch radius, and when you think Cooper Cup and then Puka Nakua and when Tutu gets back, his speed, that's a lot of questions for a defense to answer. I mean, really, you, you've got burners, you've got route runners, you've got physical guys, now you've got this freak that can catch anything. That's a whole lot of questions for defenses to try to answer in one football game. It's, the hoops team you've always wanted, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. A, he definitely adds to the uh, the hoops element, right? And it's always interesting when a player like that uh, makes his appearance later. Yeah, and you're like, ooh, maybe we, I wish. We, why wasn't he on the court earlier? <laughs> but uh, uh, it's always in. But he does, you can, all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, there is an element of size, catch radius, physicality, urgency could be. Uh, fresher legs but you know he's definitely gifted with with some some length yeah. size power physicality speed to go with it so when that all blends together it can be you know pretty music down there on the football field. plus your point guard's pretty good oh your no distributor is pretty darn good you can put it anywhere it, i don't know the 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 shoddy through the higby oh oh man the layout catch that yes, one that, that that's there's some moments he makes some throws at the angle, flat-footed against his body. Tell and me you, you didn't until think he was you watch the film. That away. 
Yeah, I thought he was throwing that to the sideline. Yeah, I, I thought no, it was a throwaway. Yeah, and then Higby comes out of nowhere. Yeah, wow. And, and one of the, I would call it one of the uh, prettier passes was the wheel route to Kyron that he didn't come up with. There was a blitz. That was a great throw. And Matthew bought time. But it, everybody talks about anticipation, but in that moment, he let the ball go. Now, obviously, he knew the coverage. He knew what route Kyron was running, but Kyron was still running to the flats when he let the ball go. Mm -hmm. And then Kyron turned it north-south, ball dropped in there. So the, there's some moments uh, he does something with the football. So I would say point guard, oh, man, he may have a little shooting in him too. A little bit. A little shooting guard. I like <laughs> He's that. not just dribbling it up the court. <laughs> Les, a lot of Rams fans have coffee mugs with your face on it for a reason. Some of the big deals you've made as the general manager of this franchise. But I'd like to go inside the Kevin Dotson maneuver uh, this summer and where that ranks among your favorite deals in terms of the the rewards that have come of it this season for the Rams. It's uh, th that uh, that all started probably when we were in discussion with uh, the Steelers with Allen Robinson and. Uh, and again, going back to our pro department that John McKay heads, Matt Waz, a part of it, Chris Triggers is, uh, and, and even Aquilo Weatherspoon, they were both Steelers at the time. So very close to uh, one of those two players being a part of that deal. But for whatever reason, you know, we didn't get it done then. But uh, going into it, Kevin Dotson had been a starter there. The Steelers, uh, for whatever reason, changing schemes a little bit had brought in a couple of unrestricted free agent offensive linemen. So what you did know is on paper, there was going to be six starting offensive linemen in the Steelers organization or six players who had started the previous year before. So there was going to be an odd player out. And with them bringing in two new players and Kevin going into his last year, you right intuitively – reasonably felt like he, he could be the odd man out. Now, along the way, we didn't get the deal done when we did Allen Robinson, but we monitored him, uh, you know, all spring and in the summer, and 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 we had some injuries in the summer, and we were always, how is ours going to play out and things like that. But with probably knocked on their door with about three weeks left to go in the preseason, but they held on to Kevin. They wanted to make sure they got through the preseason healthy mm -hmm. before they, right, made the trade. So uh, finally, after – a lot of patience. We were able to uh, get that trade executed uh, right there. Probably the you know right there. I call it cut downs. That should be a Pro Bowl or now the way he's played this season. Don't you think? I, I would hope so. I mean, Kyron's so. what? How, how many short of a thousand? He went over a thousand from scrimmage. Anytime you get a thousand yard back, you're going to start to look at what's going on up front. And if you start to look at what's going on up front, he's going to stand out, especially against the run. That's the thing that shocks me. And it happens all the time in the league. It doesn't work out here. Guy moves here. He gets an opportunity and becomes a superstar. It's amazing. Like how, why did you let this guy go? You could say this as a player, DeMarco. Mm -hmm. Is there that moment where, wow, this team gave up on me. Another team likes me you come to a totally different environment where all of a sudden you're uncomfortable and usually i go football players right there one thing they're used to doing is knowing their environment and okay i need to earn equity mm -hmm. right so I, I, you never know all the psychological factors that go on when when some a player moves from one team to the other and all of a sudden there's that i don't want to say f fire lit but it, it the heat gets turned. You're like, wait a minute, I got to earn equity again. So it, you, there's so oh, yeah. many things that go into it. Yeah. But I do know this: we, we valued what uh, Kevin had displayed during you know the course of his few years starting in Pittsburgh, and and maybe for whatever reason we needed him more than they did. I can't I can't ask, speak for them on why mm -hmm. they chose mm -hmm. the others, but there's many factors that go into it. And the other guard, you the know what's interesting? Like yeah. you bring up the, yeah. there's there's moments. I always say there's these. Y'all watch the games where there's players who do their job, mm -hmm. and then there's players who, the way they do their job, there's some momentum that comes from it. It's like when you watch Kevin run block, you're like, there's this, okay, I want to run the ball again. I want to call another. And there's And there's a lot of players that will, can make a block, but then there's some that it's like, you just want to keep watching. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's, it's how they do their job, not just – 
you know, them doing their job. It's like watching a car wreck. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, you rubberneck it for a while. But I do see people give him distance on first and 10. When you see that, when you watch down the line of scrimmage and the guy that's over him gives a half a yard back, that's how you know this guy's coming off the rock hard. That's how you know this dude is a hammerhead up front. That's respect. So, yeah. Les, last time you were here, we kind of did a walk through the rookie class, but now there are so many significant contributors. I think we'd run out of time if we tried that again, you know, individually. But I don't they, even think I could list them at this stage. That's a good sign. The and rookies? that's kind of oh. leading me to, to where I'll take this <laughs> like next. Who is, are they? How many of them? I mean, aren't they veterans by now? They're sophomores, at least, uh, for sure. They're getting close to sophomores. But here in December, pre-Christmas, what are your feelings about, I think, the prevailing sentiment, this might be Les Snead's best draft class. How does that land with you? Yeah, I know this. I give those kids credit because they're, they've are they come in. This is a stressful environment. They've managed the stress, and they've not only survived in the stress, they've they've thrived in it. It's not easy. Uh, so, and, and, and I think you, we were talking probably pre-going on air, mm-hmm. based on where we were, as an organization, uh, we were going to have to rely on these kids, especially if they did come in and show that they could, right, handle their job, potentially do the job well at some point. They had to come in and earn trust. But based on the roster makeup, different than some years where, let's call it the, you know, a couple of years ago, a rookie class comes in and, holy cow, it's, you know, we, we we have a you know a veteran in his prime mm-hmm. in each position, so it's a little bit harder to go. Okay, I'm going to come in and let's call it make some noise as a starter. A lot of those players filled roles and things like that, and and and, and had moments, but uh, this class definitely has had the opportunity to be re- be relied on more consistently, and they've you know they've uh, they've rung the bell because it's a definitely a let's call it a hard long journey. Hadn't seen a lot of. Let's call it the, the, the rookie, the rookie wall. They continue ascending and give them credit. Well, let me follow up then. Going into the next off season, where does it put you to have what six starters at least already, maybe as many as ten locked into a depth chart? Moving into how you construct a future mm-hmm. roster to get that many pros out of one class, does that accelerate your schedule or narrow your needs going into twenty four? It, it might narrow the needs which is nice and then uh that allows you to strategically maybe you know try to onboard uh like i call it not necessarily just filling needs but uh adding weapons per Mm -hmm. se Mm -hmm. uh but at the end of the day we want to continue we'll we'll get to that point we still have three games left and there'll be there'll be a uh there'll be valuable time at some point this off season where we can sit down and and a lot of times it's when the coaches and we start the coaches start going through the cut ups, right? And the cut ups being probably really studying situations. How were we on short yards? How how were we on first and second now keeping it simple? And, and a lot of times during that study, right, and you get this you're watching these situations over and over. And it's really there's an element to improve how you scheme those situations. But as you watch that, you can really see how the players are performing and, and who can do what. And, and you kind of sit down at that point and go, wow, you know, what do we really need? What, where are some places we can add weapons to accentuate what we began this, this year? And, and we'll, we'll work through that. But yes, this group, uh, a base rate of who they are based on where we were and, and what our plan was uh, definitely, definitely helps. I say I just get jacked up. I'm so happy when he says add weapons. I like adding weapons in the draft (laughs) versus trying to add the savior. And shout out to the coaching staff, you know, getting these young dudes ready to play. Um, And I would even say this, a weapon might even be a uh, a first and second down five technique that, you know, plays the run. That that can be a weapon. You see what I mean? It doesn't have to be. Someone that catches touchdowns. Absolutely, I'm just like when you're shopping for the savior. You know what I mean? That that kind of that that sucks. But when you're adding weapons, that's good. Uh, I want to ask you one more question. When you were evaluating Ernest Jones, and you were thinking your future casting at some point, this guy is going to turn into X. Does it look like what we're seeing right now? Because he he looks like an all pro. He looks like that sort of linebacker, playmaker, big hitter, brings the oomph. He's the leader. I mean, he does. When you looked at him for the first time, does it look like this now in your mind's eye? I would say when you watched him at South Carolina, he 
you would put him in the that's a fun football player to watch. Right. And you might not put him in the category where he's going to go to the combine and blow it up. But obviously has a, an element of height and length and size that can be intimidating on the field, especially when you put on the pass. Very instinct, instinctive human being. Like the, the game is slow to him. He can process it faster than some. And, it, and it, that allows him to arrive places with, with bad intentions. Did you see the sack when he ran through the block? Oh yes, it was, it, it, he turned the guy into a turnstile. I mean, that's like that's been one. That was yeah. one of the unsung things he did at South Carolina was as a blitzer. Yeah, had and, and it's interesting. You could say blitzing and you, the nuances of the game of there's some linebackers that just have this feel to actually see the crease and get through it. There's some who are just I'm heading there really hard. And you might run really hard into a running back, but he has that that nuance, that feel to find the crease, get the edge on the running back so it's not just right down the running back's chest, allows him to, even when he doesn't get a sack, even disrupt, bother. Yeah. Just ask Joe Burrow. He's a big reason why there's a banner hanging at SoFi now, right? That's a good point. But the the yeah. reason you said about Dodson, you like watching him play because of how he does his job. First guy I thought about was Ernest Jones. Same thing. Yeah, I just one. love how, you, how he does his job. He gets there with violence, and well, that's what you're supposed to play like. One thing that's been really, really neat with him is he was a leader at South Carolina and by all of our metrics, right, had the potential to really be an NFL leader. Now, with that being said, it's hard to come in as a rookie and you were a leader there, but now you're a rookie. How are you going to lead? A... So it, there's always these moments like, OK, if he ever always go, if he ever earns his keep on the field, mm -hmm. He's going to ascend sure. in the hierarchy where he now has a chance to fulfill his leadership. And I can mm -hmm. say he's he's one player. That's that's a neat thing when you see that player who has, for whatever reason, I, I, a lot of times I call it mom, dad, God. It's some mixture of intangible that you're blessed with and you're using it to say, you know what? Like on that goal line where there's that <laughs> moment where it takes someone to right, be the glue to go, okay, let's be, a, not saying it was him at that moment, but he has that potential to say, all right, hey, we got to galvanize this collective. And when he speaks, the old EF Hutton, okay, mm -hmm. people listen and, okay, that's our calling card. Hearing you say that reminds me that I, I know you don't go out looking for 53 Walter Payton man of the year candidates. You're trying to draft the best football players and build the best team. But again, with this rookie class, you found some great young men. And this isn't a question. It's just a compliment or an observation, whether it's Steve or Byron, Kobe, Puka. I got to meet Davis Allen today for the first time and sit down with him. Like, there's a lot of really good young men that are interesting to be around. I think that bodes well for your facility. It might be part of the secret sauce this year. I don't know. What do you think? It's always – I think that's very important. There's there's probably many measures in, in when you say, hey, good young man. Right. But I think if we just keep it simple, right, probably in life when you just I always go when you meet someone, you go, you know what? I hey, I'd, I'd buy stock in that that's human it. being. Uh, that's what we try to look for a lot of times when we're going through this is it, we keep it simple. We always go, OK, mom, dad, God gave them talent. And then they also have this element of intangibles. Right. And that can be, you know, who they are, personality, all those things. And there's an element probably of, of how they can absorb and process football. And then you blend all that up, and that's going to lead to some right skill on the NFL football field. Like, they're either going to be useful or not to the collective based on that calculus formula. And a lot of times, if, if, right, if those intangibles are above standard, recognizable, elite, the skill is usually going to be right. It's going to be, they're going to have a chance to reach who they're, you know, be who they're supposed to be. He would have drafted me in 94. That's what I just heard. So you he, got those intangibles right there. See, that's and, what, that was, and, and you, what <laughs> I would be a great is, example. No, seriously. I mean, you, it. Yeah. a lot of times example. I say this, it, a, a guy's born to be a, a football player. Huh. And is he going to work? Is he going to, is he going to come in and out behave to, Mm -hmm. earn the a like 
right? You, you still got to get the syllabus. You still got to go to class. You got to take the finals. I'm still got to make the A. So a lot of times, say, hey, if somebody's got a chance to be an A football player and they have, and there's a lot of things in that intangible world, but if they have those, usually they, sure. they make more A's than B's. But if you got a chance to be an A football player and you're a little less than there, there's a lot of times where, oh, he was a C plus today. He was a C minus today. Oh, there was an A day every now and then. But that's a lot of times how we uh, try to measure. So I think you're seeing that. And uh, it comes to life on the football field. And it definitely comes to life when sure it's does. in a journey probably this hard, this long, this stressful, this many ebbs and flows, all the emotions that you go through. Before we close out with a Saints preview, uh, first chance I've had to talk to you since Carson Wentz became a Ram. And given all the history with Wentz uh, and Jared Goff and going back to their draft class, head-to-head -head battles, I just want to get some context in terms of what's it like coming to work every day with Wentz and what impression has he made in the first month? You know, it's very similar to when we met however many years ago. Uh, is What, what uh, you quickly understood then is he's someone who cares. And he's going to try, right? And whatever grade football player he's – can or can't be, he's definitely going to try to to make the A if he's an A student, make the B if he's a B student, going back to what I just said. So that it's neat to see him uh, at this stage of his career still be that person. And and I know going through it all where drafted early, had success, there's some injuries, go through some ebbs and flows of a career, and for all intents and purposes could have really ended his career based on, uh, based on uh, the contract's he had signed in the money it made. But I, I do think sitting out, there's still that element of, wait a minute, okay, I might not be a starter, but boy, do I want to be a football player still. Mm. There's something about being a part of a football collective that I'm, that's void in my life right now. And uh, so, so that it, it's pretty neat to see that, so. I still can't get over how big he is. Every time I see him, I'm like, dang, that is one big dude. Yeah, I, I remember the, the first time seeing uh, him and and we go back, it was really him and Jared. We obviously picked Jared, but watching them in private workout setting, uh, you there was this moment where Jared, you're like, okay, he's just born to be a dart thrower, like he's just throwing dart. But when you went to work out Carson, he was such a large human. And my first thought, and this is a compliment, my first thought was, man, I think he was born to be a tight end but he really wanted to be a quarterback <laughs> so bad yeah, makes sense. that he became a really good quarterback. Uh, but he's just uh, – yeah. he's, a, he's a very large human. I'd have to ask him, but it, it seems like he's having a great time too, that time away, that kind of half-year sabbatical. There seems to be a joy to, to his daily presence that I think speaks to your culture as well here in Los Angeles. All right, Thursday night football, the New Orleans Saints, 7-7 seven and seven against 7-7. Seven and seven. Some pretty good battles between these two teams over the recent years and going way back in history. What do you think about Thursday night? You know, it's probably what Amazon drew up, right, for Thursday night sure. football in December, where mm -hmm. you have two teams that uh, I always say that's the neat thing about NFL football. Take the records out. You could say two 500 teams that might not be as sexy as sale, but you can say, okay, two teams that uh, are battling each other for one of those seven spots and obviously head to head on Thursday night on a short week. So, I think that I, I don't think everyone in the building, everyone who's definitely an intimate fan with the Saints, with the Rams, knows the stakes of this game. So seems like whenever there's something on the line, it's always them that you have to play. Doesn't it seem like that sometimes? You know what? I'm there's probably <laughs> some uh, let's call it historical bias there, considering yeah. I spent a lot of years in Atlanta. Yeah, and it seems like we were battling them for divisions, and they don't and, like and each other very much, do they? Them again. It's the, it's the Saints again. So, <laughs> and it, it, you know, there, there, yeah. uh, you know, there's times I probably worked in the same organization with with their head coach Dennis, and I know, I know he, I know he, he's a defensive minded mm -hmm. human. They're gonna, they're gonna play tough. They're gonna play gritty. Uh, they're gonna give it their all. So I'm, and you know what? Let's I'm. They got to play. You know what? I'll too. be honest with yeah. you. Only child selfish. Glad it's at SoFi and not. Same, no doubt.
<laughs> here's to the uh, Rams' next winning streak, and here's to uh, Les Sneed's next winning streak on the Coach McVay Show. I yes, do sir. hope the next time you step into this room, you're also coming oh, off. game ball. I get Broke to take the streak. this, right? <laughs> or is this, you I know. think you got better than that in your office. But, yeah, okay, here you we go. won't ask you where it went. Uh, Put it back on its tee. See? I can play tight end, too. <laughs> for Rams general manager, Les Sneed, and for DeMarco Farr, I'm JB Long. Hope to see you Thursday night at SoFi Saints and Rams. Thank you for being with us tonight for the Coach McVay Show, presented by Microsoft Surface.